Well, in the nest with us this week is someone who really needs no introduction, Mr. Roddy White, obviously a Falcons Ring of Honor member, all of that. Rivalry week, we know that you love that, uh, playing against the Saints. I mean, what's kind of your favorite memory when you think back to that? Oh, man, so many of them, so many of them. All of our games were pretty much close and really, really good. Um, a lot of times um, we were literally needing wins to get into the playoffs, and we ended up winning those guys. But my most memorable moment was probably 2013 or I think it was 2012. We went down there. It was the first game in the season. It was the opener, and we went down there and whooped them. And um, it just started our season off right. We went like 13 and 3 that year, so and um, ended up playing in the NFC Championship game. So that was a good year for us. But uh, we started off really, really well by going down there and, and shutting everybody up in New Orleans. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> now the Saints are coming to Atlanta for the opener. But for you, long, illustrious career that you had, do you have a favorite play from your time as a Falcons? I'm genuinely just curious about that. <laughs> I don't have a favorite play. I mean, it was so many of them that I felt like I had that made a difference in certain games. But um, most of the times when – when we did a bad play and I made a play to get us the ball back, that was probably one of my That was it. <laughs> <laughs> Stripping the guy from San Francisco and then getting the ball back and then having a two-minute drive to go back and win the game and still executing, that was special for me. I'm curious what your thoughts are on this team and maybe who you're most excited to see once kickoff happens on Sunday. I mean, I'm just most excited to see where we are as far as we came, you know, from the offseason acquisitions. Um, I want to see AJ. I mean, He's one of our best cover guys, and he's all pro. I think he's going to be special this year. You know, Kyle is going to be Kyle. Um, I'm expecting really, really great things out of him to break the tight end, receiving record, and touchdowns, and all that stuff. Balls caught in the season. I think he can have that type of year. You know, I challenge him to get 1,600 yards. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, it's just a small feat. I think he's that special of a guy. You know, and um. As far as Marcus is, man, I think he's coming in. He's going to do well for our team just from a leadership standpoint, getting the young guys, you know, going. And then we just got to get Drake healthy and give him an opportunity to get out there, you know, get his feet wet and just continue to grow each and every game, each and every week, and just, you know, watch him. I think the O-line is going to be much better. They're healthy this year. And, um, you know, it's a great start when you got five guys that you can take out there that's going to start the season that's going to be really healthy. I'm glad that you actually brought up Drake London because there was a picture that I believe was circling around around the time of training camp and it was you and Drake kind of standing side Next by side goes, yes yeah. and it was everybody was talking on Twitter it's like is Drake that big like what is, what are we doing here like Ro oh, yeah, Roddy's no, Roddy he, he is that big <laughs> I mean he's a big kid man um I mean I love him man you know um he's gonna have an opportunity to be great you know, in this league. Um, it's, uh, he reminds me so much of Mike Evans mm -hmm. and the things mm -hmm. that he could do on the field and what I've watched from him on a tape standpoint. I mean, if we can get that type of production from Drake, I mean, that's Hall, Hall of Fame level, you know, type of stats and things like that that Mike Evans can do. So I see him in that same, you know, realm. You know, he could still run, but he's big, fast, strong enough to get in and out of breaks and things like that. He's a special kid, man. He's going to have an opportunity to do a lot of great things for us. It's funny you say Mike Evans because Brian Edwards, I remember during training camp, said he literally reminds yeah. him of a bigger Mike Evans. Yeah. So that's an interesting comp that you said it too. Um, I'm interested in what your thoughts are on Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter. I mean, obviously we know Marcus is going to be the starter week one, but what are your thoughts on those two guys? Uh, I, th I thought it was a, a great way the Falcons handled it. Um, you know, bringing in Desmond, what drafting him was a great thing. And then bringing in Marcus is great because they still have the same skill set. You know, when quarterbacks have the same skill set, you don't have to change the offense. Everything's predicated and dictated on what both guys can do. So there's not a lot of transition and there's not a lot of turnover. So that's a great thing that they did, man. I'm super excited for both of those guys. But um, it'll be a great opportunity for, for, for Ritter to just learn from a guy that's been in the league for a long time and have success. You know, won some games in this league and um, has put up, you know, really decent and really nice stats throughout his career, you know, as a starter in this league. So it will be great for him to have a better understanding and see what he can do, you know, throughout games and see the mental reps and things that he can get, you know, from game to game. And that's special, man. Anytime you have a, two guys like that that just have such similar skill set and you don't have to change things, I mean, that is night and day in the NFL. 
There are a lot of outside expectations about what this Falcons team is in 2022. There are a lot of guys on one-year deals, a lot of things in transition. When you look at this Falcons team, what kind of expectations do you have for them in 2022? Uh, I just want us to come each and every Sunday and play as hard as we possibly can. And the young guys just learn. I mean, we have a really young team. Um, we're going to have some growing pains, you know, and um, Art's going to do his, his thing. I mean, he's done well. I mean, with the team last year, I didn't think we would win seven games. but <laughs> I don't think many people yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not doubting anything he could do at this point. So, um, you know, it's going to be young guys. Um, Grady and them going to have to play well. You know, he's going to have to do his thing like he does every year and just impact the guys around him, bring them along. You know, help those guys be pros a lot earlier than expected. And then just kind of just ride the wave through Mariota. I mean, he made a lot of great plays in the preseason and things like that. Getting away from people and using his feet and stuff like that and throwing the ball to those guys down the field. So we got to have opportunity to make, make all stripped plays off the strip. And then, you know, just get some turnovers. You know, that's the biggest thing on defense. We can get some turnovers and uh, just get the ball back for the offense, run the ball well, which I think we'll be able to do because we're healthy on the O-line. We can have a lot of success. That being said, where do you think things are in year two with Smith and Fontenot at the helm? I think they're doing a good job, man. I think they're doing a good job to this point as far as rebuilding, bringing in guys that fit what they want to do, and um, just exploring you know, little nuances and little new things that they're going to be implementing into the playbook this year from our arts point of view. But, you know, as far as Terry, I mean, Terry's doing a heck of a job, you know, drafting guys, getting them able to play. And um, that's where it all starts, man. If you can draft guys and get them on the field and they're productive for you, man, you got a chance to be good down the road. A couple years in a retirement for you. What's kind of next? Are you enjoying <laughs> not playing football and seeing it I mean, from afar? I enjoy watching. You know, <laughs> some Sundays I get an itch, you know, especially <laughs> when my birds aren't doing too well. Maybe I can put on some pads, but, you know, um, I'm coaching high school football. You know, my son is, is a junior in high school, so I'm enjoying that, man, you know, getting to um, – work hands-on with him and just give him everything that I have from a knowledge standpoint from the position and just watching him go out there and have success so when you pull up to the high school game are people like oh my god that's Roddy White what is that like <laughs> I mean yeah 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 they are like that you know I'm all locked in trying to get focused for the game <laughs> trying to help our team win but um at the same time, yeah, people are like that. They're like, oh, I didn't know you coach it. Like, and then, you know, they're asking me questions and stuff like that. And I try to answer questions before the game or whatever the case may be. But once the kickoff starts, I'm all in. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's only so many selfies you can take. Oh, You're yeah. like, so all right, let's, let's relax, <laughs> <Yeah>. everyone. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Anyone who wants to catch the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com. And we'll be right back on Rise Up Tonight.